Now, does it mean that um, if prevention today the governorship uh, aspirants in the APC come together today, we say, okay, we have we have met, we are the ones contesting, and then we have decided, okay, you so 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 person might not be you. I say this person we we have decided you know, in consensus. How would you how would you take that, sir? No, I'm a team player. Uh, I'm a team player, and. Uh, I think if, if we can get to the level where we can actually engage ourselves, interface, and uh, come up with a consensus, it saves a lot of money, a lot of stress, a lot of bitterness, a lot of rivalry, you know, that will be fine. It doesn't you mean you, 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 you support consensus? Oh, there's nothing wrong with it. Yes, of course, there's nothing wrong with it. But the consensus that people are advocating, which is that one that is founded on force, and in position, of course, nobody will support that. But the genuine consensus based on dialogue, based on mutual respect, based on persuasion, yes, that is feasible and that will be supported. In fact, the dialogue uh, four of us are already doing is working towards a consensus uh, candidate. Why do four of us have to go and buy four when we know that eventually one person will come? So if we are able to you know, talk among ourselves and narrow down to one or two persons. The rest are sure that, you know, the other day, we must let him know. The past one and a half years, the governor has abandoned governors. All the utterances we hear from him, they are very inciting, very provocative, and not the kind of statement the chief executive was just marching with making. I've heard him say, I will deal with him, I will crush him, we will deal with them, we will direct our boys. You know, such statements are deplorable. And uh, when you also realize who he's talking about most of the time, you know, it's, it's worrisome. You are talking about somebody who was the immediate past governor of the state, somebody who more or less who more or less did everything to get you elected, and more importantly, somebody who is the national chairman of a party you belong to. For crying out loud, you, you must respect your chairman. You know, that goes without saying. Whoever is your party chairman is first among equals. You owe him that respect. For some of us who have been playing policy for a long time, when the chairman comes in, even a local government chairman or a state chairman, we, we stand up. You know, it shows respect. It shows that we respect the party. Mm -hmm. So when you hear a governor become so, uh, uh, be, begin to, be, be, you know, get so aggressive and begin to use the kind of words, you know, that you hear on the street, it, it's alarming. And uh, the level they have gotten to now <laughs> is very disturbing. shocked to actually see the bullet holes all over his office and it was clear to me that it was just by the grace of God that nobody died. Those who have not seen it can say oh it's not true or it's nothing but I saw it for myself. I went to the office and it was clear to me that it's just God because anybody could have been there and, you know, and, 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 and they would have been killed. Those who were firing from the streets could not have said we're not firing to kill because some of those bullets fell you know inside the office in fact a young man that the one of the bullets graced his call you know came to us and we saw him oh. so it's just by the grace of god that nobody was killed and the question is if somebody had been killed how do you explain such a thing and government did nothing to even condemn the attack Henry Dagbo was the immediate past Attorney General and Commissioner of Justice. One of those who also campaigned all over the state for the governor. Even if it was a nobody, government at least should talk about it because the security of the state is paramount. But he's not just a nobody, he's a very important person in this state. And he was almost killed. And then, of course, Inek Bedeki was uh, coordinating uh, a, a rally in uh, Edo Central and some people in a very cowardly but wicked uh, manner went to his house and threw uh, uh, bomb 
proceed to the compound. Again, I went there deliberately to go and see for myself because as a lawyer, I'm very skeptical about things I hear without verifying. So just like I went to check in the dark months, when I also heard this one, I said, no, the bump, let me go and check. And I went there. And the one that didn't explode, I saw it. And of course, the one that did the damage, I saw it. Outside the house, I saw the, the windscreen of uh, the cars that were parked, shattered. I saw glass broken. You know, I saw the damage. And again, I told people, it was just the grace of God that nobody died. Because those who threw those bones from outside the compound could not have said they did not mean to kill. There was no way they would have known whether anybody was inside the house. Yes, the neighbor might not be around, it might be in the but he has uh, people in the house. So is the gate just luck or God? Not, not or God. It was God that just averted what would have been a very fatal situation. Mm. If somebody had died, what would we have said? That oh, because uh, some people are insisting on second term, so they killed somebody. You know, immunity, you know, does not last forever. And immunity cannot be a license.